And my next guest is a classic winning trainer, a, a Yorkshireman, Moose South, who has enjoyed a stellar training career in Newmarket. But it was announced earlier this week by himself that that training career was soon to come to an end. That man to my left is Mark Tompkins. We've just been talking all things Sheffield Wednesday because originally, Mark, <laughs> you're a Sheffield man. Yes, well, from between Sheffield and Manchester, yeah, but mainly near Sheffield, yes. Um, and we were talking about how Chris Hooton would be a great appointment, so we wish you all the best with that. <laughs> he would be. Hope they get him. Um, what about your, your move to Newmarket and the fact that, that, that you're a Yorkshireman that ended up there? I was with Carl Burt recently, who's a, a man who moved up north to train there. How did it come about, Mark, that, that you moved from your hometown to end up training in Newmarket? Well, I, I, I started off with Walter Wharton, who was a marvellous trainer. He, and he'd been in Newmarket and then moved to Melton Mowbray, Walter. Uh, when he trained for a major holiday uh, in Newmarket. But um, I finished up being, uh, I'd, I'd worked for one or two people, and then I, I came to Captain Ryan Jarvis, who was William's father, and, and him and his wife, Jean, were absolutely marvellous to me. And um, I was there about 74, 75, and then I started training on my own when, when the governor retired in, in 1979. How soon did Newmarket really start to, to feel like hope because you're, you're ingrained in Newmarket society now, aren't you, with the Trainers' Federation, et cetera. So, how, I mean, how soon did, you, did, you, did it feel like hope? Well, Newmarket's one of those places, and I tell everybody who comes, whether, whether they come in as a, a stable lad or a secretary or a bloodstock agent or whatever they, they, whatever they come as for the first time, if you can stick a fortnight of Newmarket, you're fine. But if you, if you can't, if, for the first fortnight, then you, then you think you've come to the wrong place. But I knew straight away I'd come to the right place. Because it it's horses, isn't it? And uh, everybody was so, so kind to me, and I've had a lot of um, help from everybody. How, how much has it changed over, what are we talking now, for, for, over 40 years? How much well, has it changed? Unbelievably. Unbelievably. It's changed completely. The whole racing industry has changed completely. And that's the... Um, that's the one thing that's, that's quite sad, and I don't quite know where it's going. I heard you talking about different things uh, earlier, and it's a, it's, a very str it's, a, it's a strange world now. Because we, we, in those days, we used to, there wasn't the amount of racing. That's the thing. The fixture list has just gone balmy, and, it's, and you just can't control it now. That, that's, the, that's the major problem, really, because we used to know everybody. We, we didn't have racing on Sundays. We didn't have the evening, as many evening meetings as we used to do. And we used to know everybody. We, you know, we'd, we'd actually have a have a friend or two in the market. But now everybody's working seven days a week flat out, and that's why that's how racing's changed. But we used to know the, the different owners. We'd know the bookies. We'd know we'd know everybody. We'd stay. We know you'd go to Air and you'd stay for a few days, or you'd go to Goodwood and probably stay, or, or, or you go everywhere and you'd have time for everybody. But nowadays, we seem to be rushing about everywhere, and that's how it's to me. It's disappointing that it has changed that way because. A lot of the enjoyment has gone out of it, really, because we're we, you know, cause we're, we're constantly flat out. Everybody is not just the trainers; the stable staff are flat out, and they're the people who, who are the powerhouse of the industry, really. And they are flat out from morning to night, seven days a week, and they don't stop. So you, you would be in camp too much racing. Oh, without any there. doubt. Without any doubt. Without any doubt. There's much too much racing. 500 fixtures are much too much racing. You see, the race courses want them because they make money out of it now with, with, with the media rights. That was the, once, that, once the media rights happened, it was, a, it was a gravy train for the race courses, although they'll say, whoa, no, it's not. It, it was, that, that, that's why they want so many fixtures, because they get so much a race. You know, and so they, they'll, they'll put them on, on time and time again. We've got to... We, 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 nothing lasts, stays the same forever was a great saying an old boy told me years ago and he was certainly right about that. Nothing does stay the same forever and things have to, have to change and it's, a lot of things have changed for the better with the veterinary side of it and, and all that side of it is, is brilliant and horses are looked after. This race and welfare thing is ridiculous. I always agree with Mark Johnson. It's ridiculous. Race horses are looked after unbelievably well now, far better than they ever were. Yeah, far better than they ever were. You know, if they had an injury, they're, they're on the operating theatre in Newmarket within 10, they can run within 10 minutes. Well, we'll we went to a hospital, it'll be, be three or four hours in a waiting list. That they, they'll, be, they'll be done looked after well, so they're brilliantly looked after. But, but it's the, it, it's the whole, it's the whole um, fixture list thing which is, which is just getting everybody uh, tired out, really. I know horse welfare is something huge on your agenda. There's a whole section of your website dedicated to where are they now, which, yes. is, which is great to see. Yes. Um, how, 
How difficult is it, not just in your yard but other yards, given the amount of racing, which means the amount of horses we have, to really control and, and, and monitor that? And and how much more can we do on that end of things? Well, it, well, it's <laughs> it's the it's 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 the it's the whole it's the whole thing. If you're in the eight, if you're in the eight thirty at Wolverhampton or the eight whatever the nine o'clock at Wolverhampton that that have been having. Um, and you're coming home, then the A14, then the M6 has got a crash on it, the A14 is shut, which is, if you've ever been by Newmarket, then you're diverted through Cambridge or down, and you're not getting home till 2 o'clock, and, and say that's on a Friday or Saturday night. And then you're on Sunday, then that's member of staff's on Sunday morning. Well, it's it not going to do it very often if, if, if it keeps happening, but it keeps happening time and time and time again. And that, that's, that's why we need an all-weather... I think we need cent much... I, I hate myself to say it, because I've always thought it shouldn't happen. But but we need centralised a lot more centralised racing. We need an all-weather track at Newmarket, which we've got the planning. Well, we've got all the, we know exactly where it's going to be and the layout and everything that's sorted out. But we we could have the ten o'clock at Newmarket. We could have racing all day at Newmarket. But then, so there'll be perhaps um, people working racing, perhaps trainers like yourself. Who don't train in Newmarket watching this saying, "Oh, hang on, this is another this is another Newmarket thing." No, you know, and, you know no, I'm all for listen. I'm all for the thing. We should have they should have put an all weather track at Weatherby. So all the northern boys, when they did when they realigned Weatherby, they should have done that because that's a lovely big galloping track. It would be fine. They could have had a, they, and they should have had one on the inside at Newbury. But you've got to have foresight, and a lot of people haven't got it. The BHA, a lot of the BHA people, haven't got it. They need foresight. We need to be thinking of what's going to happen in the future in 20, 30 years' time. But if we don't do, we're going to be, we are going to definitely be in trouble. And, and is that the, the creation of those all weather tracks that you're, you're talking around, dotted yes. around, would that just not lead to, to more and more racing? Uh, uh, until it sort of spirals no, out of control. Because a, few race, because a few race tracks will close without any doubt, and they've got to close. They're a bit like greyhound tracks and football grounds. They're, they're in the wrong place. They're in the, they're in the, so you can build on them on whatever you want to do. But if we're going to go forward, we have to think what's going to go forward. And it, Listen, I've come to the end of my career. I've had a fantastic time for 40 years. And, I'm, and we're still going to be in, very, very much involved in this. So you're not going to lose me. But, I mean, we're still going to be involved in it. But, but I just want, I want it for the youngsters of today. I want it for the young trainers who are coming into it. Do but, you... Do, I mean, it sounds like you do. Do, you, do you, On the direction we're in at the moment, do, do, you, do you fear for the, for the future of racing? I do. I do, a lot, because we're being run by people who, who don't quite have any foresight and who just want their pensions and the, and the money and they don't, understand, they don't understand what's going on. They, they say they do, but they don't, because they, don't, they, they, aren't, they, aren't they, they aren't involved with it. And is that because, Mark, there is such a disconnect by um, individuals who perhaps come from different backgrounds, which can, of course, be a good thing and take things in different directions, but who, who perhaps aren't on the ground running... What is, in, in essence, a very niche industry on the ground doing what you're doing day in, day out and, and working at the, the hours that you do? And it's difficult almost to have an understanding of that. Therefore, it's, it's difficult to take the sport in the direction that, that people like you have needed it to go in. Yes, and they don't, and they don't really listen, I don't think, either. You know, that's, that's the problem. That, 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 that is the problem. Since the jockey club uh, changed from, from, being a, from being the people who, who ran racing and all those old jockey club members... Uh, had studs of their own, owned owned horses in training. They did it all, uh, uh, and they maybe they maybe weren't modern and professional enough. And maybe some of the sons didn't come into it how they, how we turned it on. And again, time moves on, and you have to you know you have to modernise. But since the B, since we moved it to the BHA, and it's still in London, which is I can't understand why they're in London. I just can't, I know they'll say they're near the MPs and near the Parliament and all this sort of thing. But you can be in you could be in Wellingborough, you could be in Halifax. It doesn't matter where you are, because you can still get on a train to get to London to go and see some MPs if you want to if you want to lobby them. But they should have them. They should be inviting MPs to come to Newmarket, come to the races, come come all over the place, like they you know, so they understand it all. You go to Ireland, you'll see a lot of politicians in Ireland going racing, enjoying it, being with the crowd, and seeing the enjoying the crack of it all. But we, you, when have you ever seen a last an, an MP just wandering around the bookies at at Sandown or at Oh, uh, Chepstow. Never, I don't think. And there'll be there'll be some people that that look at the sport and and look at Frankie on the front pages as he seems to have dominated for the last couple of weeks or so, and see perhaps one end of the sport in a very healthy place. And it, and it, and it, we we talked about you know social media side of things, yes, how yes. much how much talk there is about how you know where the sport is. 
But from your experience, certainly in recent times, is, is there now, is the gulf between a, a trainer who perhaps like yourself has, has found it difficult this season yes. compared to where you have been as a classic winning trainer, yeah. is, that, is that divide between the, the top and the harder times, is it, is it ever growing? Change completely, absolutely change completely. Change, it's amazing they changed completely, really, because I've been chairman of the, Fed, uh, the, uh, of the New Market Trainers Federation since seven, whenever, whenever it was, when old Tom Jones retired, and, and, they, <laughs> and they voted me on every year. I say, well, somebody have another go. Nobody wants to have a go. You carry on, Gov, they keep saying. So I've carried on. But it's changed completely. Now we've got massive trainers, massive trainers. When I came to New Market, uh, a big string was 50 horses. I think Bruce Hobbs had 50 horses, and that was massive. It, it was big, you know. You know, most of them had 30 or 40, whatever. But now, they're, now they're, they've got 250 or 300 in training, plus they've got 300 in pre-training yards. And we've got a lot of pre-training yards in Newmarket, which is balmy, because all those horses in pre-training yards aren't running. So if the race courses want to have more runners, get, a, get, a, get those pre-trained horses into trainers' yards. But they're all in pre-training yards. And the pre-trainers are bigger than the majority of trainers in Newmarket. They've got more horses tottering about with staff riding part-time, just pottering about whether they've got more horses. They're making a bit of a living, the boys. Good luck to them. But those, there's so many horses there, and these five, four or five trainers are completely monopolising the sport. So, so go, back to, go back 20 years ago. Yes. D did that exist, but just not on this scale? Or no, it, really didn't, wasn't... it didn't. It, 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 you may have had an odd person outside of Newmarket who you would send them to to have a rest when if one had had an injury or one, wanted, one was going to be very backward, you'd break it and then turn it out, you know. Um, but now, now they're in their canter and they're, they're getting our way. Free trainers getting our way. And it's, one of my, it's always one of my complaints at the Heath meetings and things that we have in Newmarket. Or used to, and now they're going to be pleased I'm not there because I won't be stirring it up. <laughs> But, um, but I, we, we used to complain constantly about three trainers getting in our way. And it's, it, it's not their fault because they're doing a job mm. and they've, they've found their position. That's fine. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having a thing at go at them. But there's so many horses that aren't in training. And those three trainers, they, but don't feel they take a lot of staff off the trainers that should have the staff. See what, see what mm. I mean? So mm. it's, uh, it, that's how the life has changed. And they're charging, those three trainers will be charging more than maybe 50% of the trainers in town, you know, and we've got, say, 75 trainers in town. Was there ever a point, Mark, where you, where you saw it, you're in, in your daily life in your market, mm. where you saw it going this way, and did you ever have a decision to make for yourself to say, right, do I, do I go down that route? Do I try and get the big boy investors in, or do I... Because there's all, you know, just going on your website now and, yeah. and, and, and from meeting you a few years <laughs> yeah. ago, there's always been a sense of... of Given the success you have, but still, it's quite a family-run environment. You've got your stud as well. And, and I, was there a decision where you went, "I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I want to keep it like this." You've always, I've always been happy with what I'm doing, but I've always been un, uh, like every trainer, not just me. That I think every trainer's so ambitious. All they want to have is winners and good horses and winners. It's getting hold of those good horses. And I've had a lot of great horses over the years, mm. fantastic horses for, for some lovely people, and everybody, you know. And, and I've had some lo fantastic, great staff I've had over the years too. But it's, it, but it, but, it, but it, 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 you can see it go. You can see the ordinary, what I call the ordinary English owner who could afford ten to fifty thousand, going having a racehorse for, for one or two years and then going out of it because the horse is moderate. It's, it's when it, it, it's cost them twenty five thousand a year to have it in training, and when they've seen what it's won three hundred and fifty five pound twenty pence, they thought, well, that's stupid. I can't have another. You know, I won't be having another one. But. This is where the you were talking about prize money earlier. This is where prize money's got to, minimum race has got to be worth ten thousand. You've got to win if you win two races, you win your prize. You, you, you win your training fees. It's a no-brainer. You just it's ridiculous watching looking at Hong Kong and Australia, and Singapore, and places like that where the prize money is unbelievable. But our betting system doesn't work like that. And they need we need somebody with a bit of grit at the top who can get hold of it and get it sorted out. Else we're going to go, the big boys love it because they, 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 they win all the races. But in some ways, I remember being at a new market with a, a trainer who, who trained out in Dubai and came over to watch a, a maiden on the new market card on the July mm. course. We were watching it and he couldn't believe the prize money on offer. It's a couple of grand <laughs> yeah, for horses that have cost half a million. I know, I know. And, uh, but it was almost <laughs> that disbelief. But yeah. is the problem then that the, 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 the horses competing for those races are owned by people where... 
the, the prize money isn't the biggest problem. Well, money doesn't mean anything to them. That's you're 100% right. It doesn't mean it. They want the kudos. And they can't. And, and if you've got the money, if you're a multi billionaire or whatever, you, you, and, you want it, and you want the kudos, and you, can, you spend, you, or, you, or you get an agent who buys horses for half a million for you and 500,000, 400,000, and you win a little race, and you've had the, you, 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 you've, you've had the kudos. But you're, you, say you've got a, say you've spent 25,000 of hard earned money to, have a, to buy a horse in, in October two or three. <laughs> And we've run, and you, I say, you've and not I, met my wife. No, I know, I know. Well, they are, you see. That, that's, that's what happens. They are, you see. Yeah. This is what happens, you see. So you, so, so, you, so, you get your, so you get your horse, and it's not a bad horse. But I'm telling you, that it will win a race once it's, it, you know, but I don't think it, it can't win a novice. Because every time we go for a novice, these, all these novice races, which are, which are the manna for heaven for, these, the, for the big trainers, because they just win them, boom, 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 they keep winning them. But you can't win, because every time you turn up, whether it's at Wolverhampton or whether it's at, 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 at Ascot, you're meeting, a, you're meeting a horse that's cost a fortune and, and, have, and has got more ability than you. So you can't finish near it because you, 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 it'll be handicapped up to the hill. And, it, and, it, and it, it, even if it thinks, it, it, it goes up and it goes, so it has to have three runs. So it's cost you a fortune before you start. Your, your friends are saying to you, poor, that horse you bought is useless. Useless. And you're thinking, well, my trainer says it's all right. You know. But it, then, it's got, then you kept it another year, so then you're into 50,000. And then, and then, saying, it, then, Mark, it, goes, then it goes to Wolverhampton. The day's the, the, today's the day. We've got everything right. Once a mile and a quarter. Once we're drawn right, we've got so-and-so. Everything, everything's happy. Now's the day's the day. Have you, go, go and have your £100 on. A, you can't get your £100 on because, you, because the bookmakers won't let you have more than, t more than a tenner. The jockey but he loses, uh, and then you, you think you're going to win, and something comes up the outside of of of, of, of Mr. Gosden's that's had three runs, and 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 and, it, and it's then it then it goes and wins to Cambridgeshire, and it, it comes by, and then it, next minute it's winning something. There. See, what, and that's what happens. It's the greatest sport in the world, racing. It's the greatest sport in the world, but it just needs for everybody. It just needs sorting out a little bit. Have we become a have we become a less patient industry? Do you think, with regard to? I mean, you've had success. You've had a you've had a ledger winner. You've yeah. had top sprinters as yeah, well. But yeah. have you have we have this? Is there an obsession with precocity and an early winner? Well, I think the speed? breed is out. I think the breed is out. Everybody wants to buy these horses. And if you want, you know, if you go to the sales and try and buy a, a, try and buy what we call an early two year old one that's one that's a February, a, you know, a Feb, a February, January, February foal or a March foal that looks like being a two year old, you can. It's very hard to get hold of those ones at the right price. They should be sensible money, but they're not. You know, they're, they're not. So you've got to, you know, and the agents are the, you know, we've got to, we're a bit like a football club now. And that's one of the things that's a big change in racing in the last 10, 15 years. So the agents have come in, whereas trainers used to buy them and know that what was going on and all the rest. And now agents are the people who are, who are doing it. And, and if you're not in with an agent or you didn't go to school with an agent who you, who, you know, these, 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 these all, you know, all these young trainers, of, 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 uh, you know, are in with the agents and, and, there's, and, uh, and, they're, and they're doing it for them. But, but, I mean, they spend fortunes on horses. Mm. And you can't buy you, and you just can't get hold of them. You know? but, but, but then do you... With, so then with you're, your... left, you're, left with the, you're left with the ones that are going to be three-year-olds, really, because they're the ones you can afford, the, you know, that, that, if you're going to buy one. So, so, so you really, you've got two years, you've got two years of training fees before your horse is today's the day, sort of thing. Or I'll try and pick one up for three grand and send it to Rob Billman. And well, marvellous, 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 but yeah. see that, but that, but that can, that, that was fantastic for Rob. But that can happen, but that's an auction race. So if you're rated enough to get in the race, you've got to be rated high enough to get in that race. But that's a, that's a glorified massive auction race. And that you've got to enter well, well in advance and all the rest. But Rod's done it. It's fantastic for Rod. He's a lovely man. And, uh, and he deserves all the success he gets. Fantastic. But that, how often does that happen? You see, you can't, you can't win a Cambridge, you can't win a Cesarevich now or an Ebor or a Cambridge that used to win with a horse rated 80 or 85. You've got to be rated 95 or 100 to get in in these races yeah, now. Yeah, not, not, and, and up now. And it costs those. you a fortune to get in it, you see. A fortune to get in those races. Mm. Um, and, and you know, Weatherby's have got a monopoly. That's another thing. <laughs> you know, people don't see all those fees that Weatherby's charge you um, for this, that, and the other. It, it, it's amazing. It says entry fee thirty-five pounds. So when it when you finally come, it's about eighty-five pounds. So, so just on on you and and uh, you know, I'm a, uh, you you've had a, a great history as a trainer, <laughs> some huge success. But you're sat here because you've recently announced that you're you're effectively drawing stumps on it, and therefore that's because. Because things haven't been going as, as well as yeah, you want. Not, but, but 
but I mean, how how difficult a decision, Mark, was it to to get to that point where you picked up the phone and you said, uh, and, and you and you rung the post, wherever well, you rung, and said, "Listen, I want it out there. I'm I'm drawing stumps on it." Well, it was it was a it was a hard it was a hard decision. I can assure you, it was a hard decision to sell Flint Cottage to Willie Haggis when I did. Um, you know, he wanted another yard, William, and uh, and I just shook hands with him on the heath one morning and said that you know you, you buy, uh, uh, he wanted it, I wanted to sell it, and we sold it. But I'd reduced, I'd had uh, you know we'd had about 120 horses at one stage, mm. um, and with three or four yards in the middle of town, which we which I owned, um, but but because of you know everything goes on, um, it, it, it it was a very hard decision, and making the final decision's been. Pretty hard because I still love training. I wish somebody had phoned me up and say, "Please come and train 50 horses for me," because I, I could do. I, I've still got. I'm still so enthusiastic and all the rest. But it's not honestly not worth training bad horses on it. Was horses that, that that are naught to 60, 75. You know, you've got to have them 80 plus. You got to have a. You got to. Have, and, and if you see the big strings, they just walk by you and they're fantastic. They're lovely. They're lovely mm. horses, but they're all in one group. They're all in one, they're all in one yard, or, or not one yard, but two or three yards. You know, the, the love of the game for you yes. as a trainer is still absolutely there. The oh, fire still burns. Fantastic. But it, but it, it gets to a point where, I mean, is it is it purely financial? Is it is it is it the 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 mental game of of not having winners? What, no, what is it that, that makes it, you make it, that? No, you see, you read Mark Prescott this morning. You just haven't got to you know he you know he's had a you know he's he's had a bit of a lean spell like I have. Now we've been talk, you know he's had blood tests, scoping, doing the same as every, as we all do. And then you run them and they just run like drains. But there's something there was obviously something on one or two of them. Although some have not been very good either. Mm. So you have to be realistic about it, don't you? Mm. But you've got to have that. You've got to have the the, the come through. As I said, the big yards have got 250 in training. And if they if they knack a fifty up or they or you know fifty and they're no good, they just put fifty more in, and they and they're there ready to get come in tomorrow, you know. But, but so, so so they're there, so they've always got those those number of horses, and they're by Dubawi and they're by Invincible Spirit and by Galileo and by you know all the top all the top horses. But you try and buy one. What was the you most know? you ever spent on a horse? Um, I think I most have. I did bid. I did bid once 110, 115, and that 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 that, that was that was enough money. Um, uh, underbid or you got? No, it? no. I underbid. Yeah, I can remember the horse. I bid. I underbid on some good horses over the years. Yeah. I underbid on a very nice horse last year. I see it was second yesterday. The horse of James uh, of, of Fanchios, which is a nice horse, it was second in the in the listed race at uh, Pondus. Uh, Pondus. That's a lovely horse. I underbid on him. He was an absolutely lovely horse. He mm. was. And my owners had a good go at him, which was nice. But but so I'm a, if I say it myself, I think I'm a good judge of a horse. But uh, 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 but but we can buy them. Like even top was twenty four thousand. Bob's return and won the ledger fourteen thousand. Cool Edge, was a fantastic horse. He was seven hundred quid. But we've got you know. We, but, but they're the things. But I owned a bid on Comanche Run. I remember under bid on and Ivan Allen bought him and won the ledger. That was I know it's years ago, but they 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 uh, you, you, you know I'm still there, still there. I think I can do a job for somebody if if, if anybody wanted me to. But but you do something. I mean you didn't make your name at all by no. by by getting the best out of horses that were that were affordable for the most part. But you you certainly were happy to, to, to buy a horse or take on a horse that didn't cost a huge amount yes. and take time getting the very best yes. out of it. Yes. Did, did that job for you just become harder in recent years? Well, it did do, and, and you could do it, you could buy them on spec and sell them, but you can't do now, you see. I've had two or three on my, I've got some lovely horses, I'm just still, I've got two or three really nice horses to sell, 20,000, 15,000, they're proper horses, they're mm. proper horses, but there's nobody there for them. Years ago, every, they'd go bush like that, and everybody will tell you the same. You can't sell them, they're not the owners. Who are, who are there now? Whether it's the dreaded word Brexit, everybody's waiting for. I don't think it is. I think that's rubbish. I think it's the. I think it's how our, the finances of racing and and uh, uh, and uh, how it is at the moment. You know, what with regard to. I mean, you're not going to be training anymore, but no. but stud wise, yes. there's a lot personally for you to to turn your attention to oh, now. Yes. Oh yeah, plenty, plenty. We've got twenty odd mares at home and. Uh, yeah, and we've got some lovely, you know, we've got three baited breaths in the field and Night of Thunder and all these, mm. and Falter and Tello and Ulysses and all the rest. So we've got some lovely nice horses coming through, but that's, that. so it'll be good fun. But, uh, you know, it's... Uh, you, you need to get some of those people willing to spend the big bucks to go and go and buy them. But, but, you, you, but you need to get the, yeah, yeah, you need to get the good people, uh, you know, to, you, you know, to come and get them. But, but in but some ways, we'll are, sort you, them out. are you, do you see yourself as, as fortunate now that you can say, right, look, training, it, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, 
I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. But you've got something great to fall back on. A young trainer yes. now who perhaps sets up and yes. finds the difficulties you've yes. found may not be able yes. to, well, to fall back on something Well, like 100% right, you see. And no young trainer, I can assure you, no young trainer will set up nowadays without any money. Bec or, or without a... You know, only, the, only the very rich ones can set up now. You know, we've got, we've got two or three in Newmarket who have set up. But, but they are, they are, they've got a great backing behind them. You couldn't do it like I, like I did. I set off with... Uh, I went to see the bank. I was thinking about it the other day. The bank, see, banks are like... The banks are just no good at all, banks. None of, no, not a good bank in the world now. They've all gone. We used to know the bank manager. He'd phone up and say, well done, Mark, you had a second or a third. Well done. You know, come, come round and see me. And, 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 you know, and you'd have a... But he'd... And I'd say, I'm going to go to Goff Sales or I'm going to go to Fairy House or whatever. Or I'm going to go to... And he'd say, how much money do you want? And I'd say, well, I might spend 30000 or 40000 Oh, not a problem. And then you'd sell them, you see. And then it, it, but they were interested in you. But now, they're computers, aren't they, banks? And you, and you don't... So you, so you don't know bankers. So the banks don't help anybody. So as a young person can't start training very hard unless you've got to know it, we're a bit like a football club again so you're all you are as the manager you're a salaried if you're a salaried trainer to a rich man and then the rich man doesn't maybe doesn't understand it oh you have a bad time and then it's oh you're sacked and i'll have somebody else so it's that's maybe the way it's got to go forward did you find it quite an e when you set up then did you as a young man did, mm. was it actually quite an easy process initially well, but, I, and first 15 years of training you, th you well well no interest rates were 15 percent in those okay. days so just think of that when i was, so I was borrowing money at that 15 percent they were <laughs> and i borrowed a bit of money set off full of enthusiasm and and thing and when and i bought my yard of I, I bought off I bought for flint cottage of peter poston who was a real eccentric man lived in a and I, I used to call it a bunker down under that under the house. I used to, uh, and it took me about three weeks to get get him to sell it to me, but I did in the end. Got it to sell. <laughs> and off we go. But I was in oblivion. I was just I had six or seven horses I'd bought myself and just sold them to family, friends, and and, and everybody I knew and people. And, and very luckily, one of two of, two of two of the governor's owners sent me a couple of horses, and we and we had a winner early on in in '79. I think we had started in the September and had the first winner in October over jumps. And it just and it and it just went from there. But we've worked very hard, and 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 you can't do it without a good wife. I've got a fantastic wife, in, I mean Angie, who, who runs the who had been running the stud while I've been doing the training, and she's she's there all the time and and, and, and encourages people and to, you know. But uh, it's very hard work for young trainers. It's going to get worse. That's why I want to. And staff is the problem. You see, the staff do, do their best. In 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 what we in what they can do, but they can't. You can't keep hammering them seven days a week all the time. Is that is that hours. what's changed, Mark? Say from when you were let, let's go back thirty years it, from from the 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 daily life of your staff now looks fundamentally different to, to that which it did. Completely 30 years different. Ago. Completely different. You see, and there's so many people who only want to work part time, which is the problem. You see, the other problem they just want to come and work, right? You see, and that was. Really, um, that was really when the Arabs started, and all those old, all the old um, j j j jockeys and apprentices who didn't quite make it or made it and then retired, they would go and be work riders in the old days, you know, and and uh, and, and be part of that yard. And they didn't move about. Now, everybody moves about. Mm. They can, you know, I've had lads who've had four jobs, four different jobs, four different days in Newmarket. They finally got to me up the Hamilton Road. They've started coming up, you see. Somebody sacked them, then the next one sacked them, the next one sacked them. And they walk into me and say, can I have a job? But if it pays more up the road, they're going to go there, aren't they? Well, they are, well, they are going to go there, but they won't, they won't last it because they're not... They, they, everybody pays well. It's a well-paid job now for a young person. And it's a great job. But they, go, they only do it for so long because eventually they get so worn out by it because of the grind. It's unrelenting. The fixture list is unrelenting. And nobody ever stands up and says it, that it is unrelenting. And it's the travelling. You know, it's all right. You have been at the races. It's great to be at the races, having a drink and so on. So, and, then, uh, and then the 8.30, and you've, gone, you, you've got in your car and gone home or gone to a taxi and gone home or somebody's driven you home. The poor stable has got an hour and a bit and they've washed the horse down or something mm. and so on. So then he's got to think, then he gets in a traffic jam. He's not home. Then, he, the, then he's pitch dark and he's got to walk home in the pouring rain. You know. There's no accommodation in Newmarket because we're uh, we're uh, I'm in town for Cambridge, so there's little terraced houses which were fifty, hundred thousand a few years ago. Now are two hundred and fifty thousand, and everybody works the, the Cambridge Road so busy in the mornings because they're all going from Newmarket to Cambridge to work or to mm. London or wherever. So so we need 
I've been going on to the jockey club for years and years and years and years about getting proper accommodation for stable staff. We've got the planning permission, they just won't do it. There's always some excuse not to do it, but we want 250 one and two bedroom flats. We could do it tomorrow if we got the money, if they'd, if they'd do it. And that's what we want. We want them to go home to a clean bed and, uh, and with a phone and internet and all the vermin rest and, and, and warm and dry and vermin. And that's what we want for staff. And then you maybe could keep them a bit more now. Yeah, um, uh, retention, I remember we came to see you a few years yeah, ago and you, um, retention um, was the word, which we're going to get on to. Mark, don't go anywhere. I need another hour with you, to be honest. <laughs> um, don't go anywhere. We're going to get uh, Jim McGraw and uh, Chris Hughes coming back in to rejoin Mark. We'll take a pause for now. Luck on Sunday, proudly sponsored by Albastiet Cruel Dubai.